Early on the morning of 17 June, General Thomas Gage, Governor of Massachusetts and Commander-in-Chief of British Forces in North America, awoke in his Boston home to learn of a serious new threat. On the Charlestown Peninsula, which was connected to the mainland by a narrow neck of land, rebel soldiers were building military fortifications on a rise known today as Breed's Hill. If left alone, they would surely fortify neighboring Bunker Hill as well. Gage met with his officers and planned an immediate attack. Numerous commentators have criticized General William Howe, the British field commander, for making an assault on Breed's Hill instead of just occupying the neck of the peninsula and waiting for the Americans to surrender. Boatner contends this assessment. The tides did not favor a landing at the neck, he says, and time was of the essence. If Howe had delayed any longer, the Americans would have finished reinforcing Bunker Hill adjacent to the neck and been in a much better position to resist. Covered by several warships, Howe's men landed on the beach below Breed's Hill around 1 p.m. While eating lunch, Howe sized up the American position and summoned reinforcements. Beginning at 3 p.m., the Redcoats made two unsuccessful um, charges against the redoubt atop Breed's Hill and a line of militia sheltering behind a rail fence to its east. Each time, they were repulsed with large number of casualties, and each time they were grouped to charge uh, again over the bodies of their dead comrades. On the third try, reinforced with 400 new troops, the Redcoats withstood yet another withering musket volley. Then the Americans, most of them out of powder and lacking bayonets, finally abandoned their redoubt. A small group of Americans made a stand on Bunker Hill to cover the retreat. The British had won the battle, but at a cost far out of proportion to the small peninsula's worth. The Bunker Hill Monument Association, formed in 1823 by prominent citizens in the Boston area. They wanted to preserve part of the battlefield and build a great monument where the provincial militia had dug in on Breed's Hill. The Bunker Hill Monument Association purchased 15 acres of the battlefield in 1825. This land already had contained the first monument on Breed's Hill. It was installed by the King Solomon Lodge in 1794, and it was a wooden pillar dedicated to the fallen Dr. Joseph Warren. The building of the obelisk began in May of 1827, but the work stopped in December of 1828 after a 19-month effort because the Bunker Hill Monument Association ran out of money. The monument reached about 37 feet tall, sitting upon a huge foundation. Work resumed in June of 1834 with help from the Massachusetts Charitable Mechanic Association, a working man's fraternal group. This activity lasted 17 months before work stopped again in November of the monument now stood 85 feet tall, still 135 feet, short of the goal of 220 feet. In 1839, the Bunker Hill Monument Association sold 10 acres of the battlefield purchased in 1825 to pay off debt. After raising over $30,000 and receiving two more donations of $20,000, Work on the monument restarted in May of 1841. With this funding and a new steam engine, 135 feet of the monument went up in about a year. In July 1842, the finished obelisk reached 221 feet. On June 17, 1843, the monument opened in a national event. 
the Bunker Hill Monument Association did not preserve 10 acres of the battlefield and kept only the four acres around the obelisk. The Bunker Hill Monument Association had underestimated the cost and time it would take to preserve the battlefield and erect an obelisk. By 1919, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts owned the Bunker Hill Monument, but in 1975, it passed the task of preserving this national shrine to the National Park Service. The Bunker Hill Monument became a National Historic Landmark in 1961 and joined the National Register of Historic Places in 1966. Boston National Historic Park of the National Parks of Boston now stewards the Bunker Hill Monument. The Bunker Hill Monument preserves the memory of the Battle of Bunker Hill for Americans. It honors the solidarity and sacrifice of the provincial militia because the militia changed not only their own lives, but the lives of future Americans that day. Thank you.